Anyway, my official Avid user certification course for Pro Tools is now enrolling again. That's right, you probably missed out on the first one because there are limited spaces available so that I can give one-on-one -on -one attention to every single student. If you're ready to really learn your DAW, stop fumbling around inside of Pro Tools and go ahead and get you a tangible credential that can prove your skills in the workplace and to your clients, this is what you need to do, man. Sign up right now. All the details are in the description below on how you can take a class with me to get Pro 2 certified. Don't wait. Just like the last term, this class will fill soon. If you are even considering getting your Pro 2 certification, there's no better way, not a funner way, not a cooler way to get certified than with your boy Wavy. Drop down in the description right now, click that link and register because you don't want to miss it again. Hey man, quit looking for shortcuts in life. It ain't no shortcuts in life, but there are some in Pro Tools, baby. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com. Com. And you better know by now that this channel is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster. So I got one question. Why you ain't hit subscribe yet? You just out here stealing my content, ain't you? Anyway, <laughs> that intro is totally correct, man. It ain't really no shortcuts you can take in life that's going to get you to the destination you want. But if you are a recording engineer, mixing engineer, you running Pro Tools sessions, you better be using some shortcuts, man. Because if your clients find out or even think for a second that they can do what you do, then they might just try to boot you out the way and go for a real editing ninja, man. So let me show you all a few of my favorite shortcuts, man. This video is going to be the top 10 shortcuts that I like to use in Pro Tools. If you like to hear them, here you go. First and foremost, man, we can't do nothing or be nothing if we don't save. So if you know me, I always have my thumb on the command key, my index finger on my left hand on the S key, and I'm always hitting command S after every single thing I do in a session, right? You make a selection, you hit command S. You see the little flat file set flash. Boom, Command S. You cut something out, Command S. You want to save at least a thousand times per second. You thought I was gonna say per session because you ain't saving enough. Anything that you do that you wanna keep, every change you make to your session, hit Command S and save it. It will save you a headache. So this next shortcut that I'm gonna show y'all is a little button to really save y'all life because I don't really like to use it, but it's something that so many people keep running into on accident and you just can't figure out what's going on. It, it ruins your session. And what that is is the insertion follows playback, man. I get asked about this button about 100 times a week because y'all haven't taken my Pro 2 certification course, but I digress from that, man. Let me show y'all what I'm talking about. So in normal Pro 2's fashion, when you hit play and then you stop, you want your cursor to return back to the same spot that you played from so you can play from that spot again. That way, if I have a selection and I play my selection, and I stop, I don't lose my selection, I can keep playing that same selection that I'm focusing on. When insertion follows playback is turned on, that's this little button right here with the arrow face to a triangle, right? When that is turned on, watch what happens when I hit play. After the playback, right? The insertion point goes to the last spot wherever the playback stops. So I can play from here again. Right, the insertion point is always going to follow the playback cursor, and wherever I stop the playback, that's where my new insertion point will be. Now, that is really annoying when you're trying to focus and edit on stuff because, especially if you have a selection of anything, when you hit play and stop, you're going to lose your selection because the cursor is going all the way down the street. Okay, how do we fix that? What's the shortcut to turn it off? Look down at your keyboard right in front of you if you were uh, sitting in front of one. And right above the space bar, you got the letter N. That letter N is the shortcut for insertion follows playback. 
It's so easy to turn on by accident because our fingers are always hitting that play button. So know that and please avoid that. Here's another little tip while we own the search and follows playback. Right here in the top right corner, this little button, this is the uh, command keyboard focus button, right? That basically will enable you to use one key shortcuts in your Pro Tools session. Now there's a couple of places uh, for focus on this. You can have that focus in the clips list. You can have it over here for your edit playlist. You can also have it down at the bottom left on your groups list. I like to make sure that the keyboard focus or command focus is always highlighted for my playlist. That way my editing commands can be one key shortcuts. The next shortcut that I'm gonna show y'all has to do with nudging, man. So nudging is basically when you move a clip or selection by small precise increments using the keyboard. It sounded like I got that out of book because I did, the Avid Pro Tools certification book. I digress. Moving the clip by small precise instruments, in increments using the keyboard. In those specific increments, let me just make a selection here. I'm gonna move, uh, move in. Let me actually just select this clip, right? I can select this clip and move it earlier, you see it's moving ever so slightly. If I zoom in a little more, we can see how it's moving ever so slightly just by using plus and minus on the numeric keypad. Okay, but that ain't the shortcut that I'm here to show you. If you don't have the numeric keypad, you can still take advantage of nudging. So if you use the greater than and less than symbols right on the uh, QWERTY keypad here, then you can also nudge. Greater than, right, is going to take you to the left. Less than is going to take you to the right. But it gets even better. M and forward slash also act as nudging. But here's the caveat. Instead of just nudging by your nudge value, if you use M or the forward slash, it will actually allow you to nudge by twice as much as your nudge value. So you can get even more nudging power with the same amount of keystrokes. Before I just did all that nudging and I moved my actual audio clip out of time, it might have been crucial for me to make a duplicate or new playlist so I can demonstrate for y'all without messing up what I'm doing, right? New playlist is a feature that I actually love to use all the time, and especially while you're recording, I always recommend that you never delete anything. If you're recording a verse or bridge, whatever it is that you're recording on that track, once you're done with the first take, instead of deleting it, Hit control in the backslash, which is the key right beneath my uh, delete, right? Hit control backslash, and that will allow you to have a new edit playlist. That way I can ultimately record and enable this track, lay something else down, right? Record something brand new, and if I decide, you know what? That was actually really terrible. We don't like that. I can go ahead and jump back to my main playlist, right? So over here at the tracks nameplate you have a little playlist selector where you can drop down to create new playlists or duplicate the playlist duplicating the playlist is a cool little feature if you just want to make some edits to what's already existing and be able to go back to what uh, uh the original version was but if you just choose new that will give you a whole brand new blank playlist on that track or like i was showing you all the shortcut control um, on a Mac and remember that uh, some of these may be a little bit different if you're using a PC So it's gonna be control on the Mac and then the backslash key not the forward slash the backslash And that will allow you to make a new playlist All right, so let's keep on moving one of my other favorite Shortcuts is routing to a new track now I don't know if this is necessarily a shortcut, but it definitely will save you time It ain't a traditional shortcut like you using a key, but if I wanted to set up a new effects track or set up a submaster or anything like that, I can easily route in modern Pro Tools to new tracks that aren't even created yet. Let me give you an example. So if I have this uh, track here, I got my lead verse, maybe I wanna add some flanger effect, right? I can go right to the sense. I haven't created a flanger yet. And instead of routing out to a bus or an existing track, I can just choose a new track. And I'm just gonna go ahead and call this new track flange. It already defaults to being a stereo aux input track. I can go ahead and create that. Perfect for my effect. And boom. Now that I have my flanger track, the input is a flanger bus. I'm sending to that flanger bus from this lead verse track. And the only thing that I need to do is actually insert a flanger. Another shortcut that I like is the ability to actually search for plugins. Wow. If you can't search for plugins, then I don't want to use your DAW. <laughs> 
All right, next, let's just talk about recording, man. There are three ways to instantly start recording our session. Now, there's the granny way to start recording where you can record and enable the track. It's kind of tight. I'm going to mute that, though. <laughs> you can record and enable the track, open up the transport, and then you would have to hit the record button in the transport and then hit the space bar in order for your session to actually start recording, right? All that takes way too long, and I don't want this extra screen up on my window, right? Taking up my real estate. If I want to start recording, all I need to do is record and able to track and use any one of these three shortcuts. Command space bar, numeric three on my numeric keypad, or F12. After you record and you want to do some editing, another dope technique that you can use, man, is separating the clip, right? So let's say I want to drop my cursor right there in the middle of that, and I want to just go ahead and break that clip in half. B, the letter B. Yeah, the simple key B. And I remember it because it helps me to break the clip. So if I just hit the letter B, that will separate or break the clip. And so now I can turn one clip into two or even make a selection and make a new clip from that selection remember that to use one key shortcuts you must have this command keyboard focus button enabled right here in the playlist another feature that i found really helpful in a little shortcut that's going to save you some time is the ability to copy plugins and their settings and sins and their settings so i have these background vocal tracks here if i wanted to make a change to one of the plugins maybe i need to change the threshold and all of these tracks are pretty much the same content so i've changed one i can hold the option key and drag and drop this over to copy that plugin and its settings over to another track you can also do that with sins as well. If I had sins that I wanted to copy over, including any automation data or anything like that, all you got to do is hold the option key and drag it from one track to the next. All right, there's a lot of shortcuts in Pro Tools, man, and I ain't got time to go over all of them today. But if y'all want to see more, drop down in the description and let me know. I got one more, though, before we get up out of here that I am going to show y'all that I think is pretty cool just because I... Um, think that is pretty cool so let's go over to the edit window for this so um in the edit window what i'm going to do is just create a couple of markers one way to create markers uh, is to use enter on a numeric keypad you could also go up to the markers ruler and hit the little plus button and let's say i want to call the first marker my intro to the song and i'll just go somewhere else later down the song and call this uh you know verse one right so you see how we can uh, become very organized in our sessions uh, by using markers. So I got an intro, a verse, and a hook, okay? When you create a marker, they all get assigned a number as well. So um, Pro Tools can use those numbers to actually recall those markers. Yes, you can go up to the window menu and go to your memory locations window and be able to recall these markers. If you notice, the playback cursor jumps to the location of each one of those markers when you record. Right. But this is very useful for, say, if I'm in the mix window, if I'm in the mix window and I'm working on a mix, I can use my numeric keypad to recall these markers and jump from section to section in my song. So let's say I wanted to instantly get back to the intro. I could hit period one period. So it's going to be period or a decimal point in this case, the on because we're on the numeric keypad, the decimal, the number of the marker and the decimal point again. And when you do that fast enough, bop, bop, bop that marker will be recalled, all right? So I'm starting at my intro. Let's jump to the verse. Jump to the hook. Right, so you see how um, very easily, even without this window open, I can navigate my session just by using those markers, period, the number of the marker, and period again. All right, family, I hope you have learned something new. If not, you've just been reminded of something you already knew. But what are some of yours? Actually, give me your top three shortcuts. Maybe some that I listed, maybe some that I haven't. Top three shortcuts in the comments. The best comment wins. What do you win? You win a prize. A like and a comment reply by me. <laughs> Thanks for watching this video. I'm Wavy Wayne from wavywayne.com, man. Until the next time, y'all going out there and be dope. Thank you.